The sales routine is, um, as we were trained, is what's known as the sheep paddock, where you just go through the whole routine, you know, closing gates as you go, until the only gate left open is the one where you buy the product. Uh, so you go through all the steps, uh, building anxiety, building the need, moving people through the gates, closing them behind them, till the only gate left open is the one I'm offering. The only gate left open is the one where you buy the product. Yeah, so my poor baby M, she's been having like a lot of problems at school with mathematics and I need to find a way to help her. Um, I was thinking of one of those one-on-one -on -one tutors, but the prices are exorbitant. So we thought at the time. Yeah, well, we thought at the time that you know we'd find another way to help, and we got a friend who's a teacher, and um, she was willing to do it. Yeah, I've got a friend, uh, my girlfriend. She's a primary school teacher, so she said, you know, she'd be happy to help. So she's trying funny but hard to place time really so um, and we were happy to pay the 25 bucks an hour. Oh yeah I mean like it's, it's fine I mean like I work really long hours and yeah. I can't help her and I mean even if I was around I don't think I can help her. And let's face it we have methods of maths and it's all different these days from when oh, we were kids. Oh god anyway. maths has way changed from when I was at school. So we were down at the mall the other day and they were um, setting up in the middle bit and um, I just thought you know I'll just go over and I'll have a chat and um, sign us up for a bit of a demonstration. A couple of nights later, they give me a call and um, they just said, yeah, we're going to send some technicians around, but we need to make sure you're all home. And especially Emily, because they needed to sit down and evaluate her and, and have a one-on-one -on -one so they could work out what level she was at. What you really got to understand is, you know, this assessment is just a prop to get us in the door, OK? Um, you know, I mean, they're pretty hard. Most kids get them wrong. Uh, but that, you know, I mean, that's, that suits us. I mean, that's what helps us sell the product. Hi. Hi. How are you going? I'm good, how are you? That's uh, Robert Fisher from the National Institute oh, of Maths hi. and Learning. How are you going? Good, come in. You're Rebecca? I am indeed. Yeah, and you're Steve? Steve, that's right. Oh, yeah. how are you going? Yeah, good. Yeah. 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 So can we come through? Yep, yeah. Thanks. The most important thing is to build so rapport. You know, nice house, you know, how long you've been here, nice cup of tea, that kind of stuff, you know. You've got to stay in control. Alright? You know, Dad will have you over right. here, well, Mum over here. Over it's a control thing. So, okay, well, we've been in the business around 20 years mm -hmm. and we work with 600,000 students. Yep. Um, today, I'll do an assessment of Emily, mm -hmm. um, just to see how she's going on a statewide basis. And most importantly, I'll interview the two of you. Yeah. Uh -huh. Um, and that's just to get some sort of parent feedback, uh, just to see, you know, how you're going with reports and schools and all that kind of stuff, and any other concerns you might have. Yep. Um, is Emily here? Yes, she is. Um, she'll be out in a minute. Okay. All right. Um, and yes. Yeah, so, how does that sound, Rebecca? It sounds Steve? great. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds yep. great. Yeah. Yep. Great. Yeah. What we're told to do in terms of sales technique is to emphasise that. You know, we're only in the area at the moment and we won't be coming back. You know, so the decision needs to be made tonight. That's it. I mean, that sense of urgency. We've got to build that sense of urgency. Actually, we're only visiting uh, a few people in the area, okay? We just sort of do area by area. Mm -hmm. So we'll be around here for a day, just a day or so, and then we're moving, moving on. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's good. So we're one of the lucky families. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well thank yeah. you for. Yeah, it's My here. pleasure. My the pleasure. truth is, okay. we can go anywhere we want. You know, we go wherever the work is. So, you know, but if we didn't have that, if we just gave them the option to, for us to come back or time to think about it, then we'd just be wasting a lot of time. So, how would you describe your attitude to Emily's education in terms of marks and I mean, I, thing? I think marks are, are really important these days. Mm -hmm. It's... Um, like it, it seems to be what 
helps kids get through like into mm. uni and, and yep. to actually choose courses. And you want her to reach her potential, that's right? Of course. Yep. Yeah, right? yeah, so we do. Okay. Is education important to you, would you say? Oh, yeah, fair, fair Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah, look, it's about being their friend, getting them to trust you. Um, it's a bit embarrassing, really. I mean, you can see how cheesy it is. You know, do you want your kid to reach their full potential? Well, you know, what parents are going to say no to that, you know? Is education important? Well, of course it's important. Look, I know when we speak to a lot of parents, um, they're very frustrated about the reports they get because it doesn't actually tell them where their children really need help. Okay, would you share that view? Absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. So we're trying to, you know, come across as a, like an education assessor, you know? Um, if they ask us, you know, what, what we're doing, we just say that we're doing some kind of research or something. Our research has shown that most kids won't know what they want to do until they finish school. Mm. Okay, so would it be fair to say that you'd want Emily to have as many choices when she does know what she wants to do? Absolutely. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. The important thing is to understand that these people have already said yes on the phone. You know, it's sort of prepared in a sense. And I'm just there to build anxiety. Is Emily ready? Um, yeah, hang on a sec. Um, Em, are you there? Yeah. Do you want to come in, hun? Do you want to come in? Have a seat. Emily, this is Robert. Robert, this is my daughter, Emily. Hi, Hi. Emily. How are you going? Good. All right, what we're going to do today is a bit of a quiz. All right, you know how at school your teachers say, if you can't do something, give it a try anyway, okay? What we're going to do today is the complete opposite, okay? Yeah. If you see a question on here and you don't understand it or you can't answer it or you're not sure, you just move on, all right? Okay, I'm not gonna mark you. So at the end of the quiz, if the sheet's blank, I really don't mind, all right? All right? But it's very important to be honest, okay? So I can see how I can help you. Okay, now maybe you take it into your room, perhaps? Yep, so you can concentrate? Yeah, there, take that one there. All right, now there are three basic rules, okay? One is if you can't answer the question, move on. Number two, don't use a calculator, yeah. okay? And number three, don't phone a friend, <laughs> all right? That one. All right. <laughs> okay, all right, off you go. Thanks. Thanks. So then we need to get a bit serious. Uh, the next um, step in the process is to take the kid through a little questionnaire, a uh, little assessment. And the goal of this questionnaire is to build concern in the parents about their kids' uh, academic achievement to kind of create a level of anxiety. It's not really a test. She should score high. Yep. I actually gave her last year's work. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So one mistake, it's probably carelessness. Okay. Two or more, it's likely she has a missing concept. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. I guess the first part of this presentation is, um, I'll give the structure, is to kind of build the anxiety in the first part and uh, to kind of build the need um, and then the second part is when you you come in and you solve the anxiety. The way in which the system works, mm -hmm. okay, the way we learn at school yep. is a sequential process, okay? okay? It's a yep. little bit like laying bricks to build a wall, okay? Mm -hmm. so here's the wall. Yep. Now let's say in grade one, okay, yep. We learn the grade one curriculum, okay, yeah. in order to get on to grade two, right. all right? That's yeah. the reality, okay? But it's not really the reality, okay? The reality okay. is this. What we end up with is we're missing a couple of bricks, or okay. there's a couple of bricks that are a bit shaky, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, those two missing bricks are gonna affect the learning year by year as we go on. What we create essentially is what's called a knowledge gap mm, okay? okay but which progressively gets bigger and bigger as we progress all right yeah do you see what i mean mm -hmm. yeah okay. and after the testing it showed there was a lot of blocks missing so our brick wall needs to be 100 percent, okay to yep. allow for any problems in the year oh yeah yeah all right if we could find a way to improve your marks, would that make you feel better? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Okay. So you see how important it is to be one 
stimulated at school. Oh yeah. And yep. two, to make sure that every brick is mm -hmm. cemented permanently into our wall of learning. Oh, absolutely, okay. yeah, I can yeah. see that. Yeah. Mm. And, and then he said, you know, let me go through it with you and sort of break it down a bit for you. And I, um, I just knew he started talking about, you know, investing in your kid and the importance of investing in your kids and uh, that, that guilt thing. Um, I looked across, saw Beck's face, and I just thought, oh, where are it going? On? It's about her future. Like, I want what's best for her. I want her to have the best advantages in life and in through school, and I want her to have a good future. And, like, you know, there's the guilt side. I work really long hours, and I'm not there for her. And even if I was, I, I can't help her with that side of things. I knew he had Beck. Well, I needed to help him, and it was... It's a reasonable amount of money to spend on our child's future. And I know that was where he was going, but that's exactly where I was as well. And, and if you don't, he made you feel that if you didn't invest that money, um, that you were doing the wrong thing, you know. And um, at that point, I just thought, uh, look, I don't want to be part of this. So although I was in the room, I just went across the kitchen bench. Yeah, yeah, you had enough. Yeah. So anyway, we, we sat down and he started filling out the forms and, and basically I just went, yeah, sign me up. Right. Okay. Right. Thank you for All coming. Right. Well, that's fantastic. I really appreciate it. Okay. Well, you won't regret it. Okay. okay. You won't look back. All no the worries. best. Okay. okay. Well, okay. someone will be in touch in the next couple of days. All right? All right. Great. Okay. Thanks. Good on you. Okay. Bye. Enjoy your night. Yeah, you too. See ya. Bye. And you become mates. And you create the impression that, you know, it's not about the money, that you're there to help them. It makes it really difficult then for that person to just give you the slap in the face and say no. Look, I don't mean to be condescending, you know, this is my background as well. You know, Howard's battlers, Rudd's work in families, but, you know... They're the ones who are more easy to bully, push around. They're the ones who feel guilty about their kids' success.